began look at verse 2 in verse 2 until the day in the which he was taken up after that he through the holy ghost had given commandments unto the disciples whom he had chosen verse 3 and then he tells us to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs that was risen from the dead being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God verse 4 then tells us and being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye, is the ye there? But ye, I said that you, is he there? Is she there? Tonight is your night of power. But she shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days since, verse 8, but she shall receive power. You will not receive weakness. You will not receive anemia. Being anemic, tired, weak, cannot move. What are you going to receive? power dynamite strength after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth three things there number one the promise of the baptism or the spirit Number two, our portion of benefits through the Spirit. Number three, the proof of being baptized in the Spirit. Look at number one. Number one, the promise of the baptism of the Spirit. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He, that's Christ, he, that's a savior, he, that's a sanctifier, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I thought I'd hear a good amen. <laughs> baptize you that word baptize means to dip you inside immerse you inside surround you with the power and the fire of the holy ghost now when somebody carries fire you can tell when there's fire insects will not be able to go into that fire worms will not live dwell inside that fire crawling creatures will not dwell live abide inside that fire when the believer saved sanctified purified when he has the immersion in the holy ghost there is fire and every chaff will be burnt out of your life in jesus name look at number two there number two there our portion of benefits through the holy spirit look at john chapter 7 reading from verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink if any man thirst 
let him come unto me and drink now thirst is very important and when somebody is not thirsty for one day for one week and he says i don't i, I can't drink water because i am not thirsty something is wrong then when somebody has eaten and he says although i've eaten i don't have the thirst or the desire to drink water there is something an ingredient missing in what he has eaten when we eat the word of god when we partake of the word of god and then we don't have any desire for the power of the holy ghost something is wrong and the power will not be given if we are not thirsty if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink verse 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow tell me tell me now shall flow rivers of living water hold on now i know that many people mention baptism 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 in the holy ghost but can you tell honestly that rivers of living water are flowing from within you gushing out from within you and if rivers of living water if they are there and there's so much that they are flowing out and gushing out of you there'll be freshness inside we'll not be getting tired every time we we'll walk a few steps and every time we read the bible will not be dozing on the bible if rivers of living water if those rivers abide in us and they're flowing out the people who live with us and the people who interact with us they will know rivers flowing out of him out of her unto me they will not say every time i meet brother so and so i get discouraged every time i meet sister so and so it's like you know i'm just fagged out totally tired i know he knows the bible he quotes bible quotes bible but you know the way he quotes the bible every time i get near him every time i get near her it's like i am crushed and destroyed we need to check up instead of just saying baptize baptize it says out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water look at verse 39 but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him shall receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified look at john chapter 14 verse 16 it tells us and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter another comforter another comforter that ye may abide with you forever now christ was a comforter to the disciples and anytime they had any challenge he will comfort them care for them now he said i'm going away but don't be sorrowful when i'm gone i will send another like me another effective in comforting like me somebody says i'm baptized in the holy ghost a little problem a little challenge will set him crying set her crying and he cannot point to anywhere in the bible that will give him comfort the comforter is absent but he's claiming that the comforter is present when we're baptized in the holy ghost he says another comforter will come and he will abide 
with you forever tonight is that night look at verse 17 verse 17 even the spirit of truth look at that the spirit of truth now somebody says i have the holy ghost and uh, he's reading a book and there's error in that book he cannot detect somebody says it's baptized in the holy ghost and he hears something weird strange not according to the scriptures and he cannot tell and yet i'm baptized i'm baptized hold on my brother is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but he know him and it for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you when you are saved the spirit of god bears witness you are a child of god he dwelleth with you when you are sanctified the spirit of god bears witness he has accepted your consecration he has purified you and he has refined your life the spirit which you but the still is step further he shall be in you when you are saved christ was not dwelling inside those apostles but now when the holy ghost comes he the spirit of truth and the spirit of power and the spirit of grace the spirit of understanding and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of fire from the altar from heaven will dwell in you look at verse 26 it says in verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things look at that a portion in the spirit he shall teach you all things you ask somebody he says you know what i'm baptized in the holy ghost i talk in tongues and then we'll say which one comes first the resurrection of the dead and the rapture of the saints i said uh -uh, i'm not a bible scholar that one i don't know which one comes first the great tribulation or the second coming of the lord i heard our pastor saying something about it before but now i don't remember when you are baptized in the holy ghost it says he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance what message did we hear about christ in the morning mm. anyway it was a good message i like the message uh -uh, not like the message what did you hear in the morning well to be honest I don't remember when we have the holy ghost it shall bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you that's what we have our portion as we are baptized and immersed in the holy ghost look at john chapter 15 in john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 26 but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. He'll show you Christ, Christ on earth, Christ on the cross, Christ who rose from the dead, Christ at the right hand of the Father right now, he shall testify of me. Look at verse 27. It says, and ye also, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, empowered 
by the Holy Ghost, enveloped by the Holy Ghost, energized by the Holy Ghost, and ye shall also bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Look at chapter 16 of John, verse 7. John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is profitable for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's come. And then somebody is doing something naughty, something evil, something sinful. And you say, ah, my friend, well, beyond this now, we should have graduated from this level. How about this? Ah, is it bad? I didn't know that. That is bad. I didn't know it's wrong. And you see, you have the Holy Ghost. When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Then in verse 9, of sin, because they believe not on me. Verse 10, of righteousness, because I go unto my Father. And you see me no more. Verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Verse 12, I have yet many things, many things, many things to say unto you. But she cannot bear them now. Because the Holy Ghost had not come to them in that full baptismal measure. And there are people like that. They are believers. They are saved. They claim I'm sanctified. They claim I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. When you open the Bible and you want to talk about the subject the Holy Ghost is emphasizing today, they're shifting from side to side on their chair. They cannot bear. The teaching of the word of God. All they want, water and milk of the world. And wants to go beyond the water and the milk of the world, they're feeling some discomfort. But when he is calm, what you cannot bear now, then he reveals. Look at verse 13, how be it. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and I will show you things to come. Tonight, your story will change. Your experience will go higher. You'll have the real baptism, immersion, enveloping, empowering of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Number three there, number three, the proof of being baptized in the Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but they shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's the proof. That's the proof. It's not shaking. Power. It's not falling on the ground. Power. It's not foaming out of the mouth. Power. It's not repeating the tongues of the pastor, of the reverend, of the bishop that is spoke from the microphone. Power. That's the portion we have, and that's the proof of the baptism immersion in the Holy Spirit. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come 
upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem you'll be a witness when the Holy Ghost has come upon you ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the most part of the earth look at Micah chapter 3 verse 8 Micah chapter 3 verse 8 but truly I am full of the power of the Spirit of the Lord was the evidence and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin a preacher says he's baptized in the Holy Ghost and he's preaching and he comes across the Word of God that will convict people of their sin and he says I cannot read that one I cannot explain that one if I read that if I explain that they will not like it she will not like it. he will not like it and so he passes on and he never talks about sin that God condemns in every life only about love about grace about the goodness of God is a motivational speaker is not a preacher of repentance and faith in the Lord Micah said truly honestly sincerely I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel a sin look at Acts chapter 4 reading from verse 31 and when they had preached the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak and they speak they were filled with the Holy Ghost refilled a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness what the use of speaking in tongues without boldness speaking in tongues without ability to declare the word of God with boldness look at verse 33 in verse 33 and with great power that's the proof of the Holy Ghost he has come and when he comes he gives us understanding when he comes he, give, he gives us the boldness and the courage and the confidence and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all looks like your time has come I said looks like your time has come and the Lord himself faithful to his promises will give us the real thing the real power and the real outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Jesus name point number two now point number two the partakers of fresh baptism in the spirit Luke chapter 11 reading from verse 9 and I say unto you ask and it shall be given you amen, amen. seek and ye shall find amen. amen why is the amen going down amen. knock and it shall be opened unto you look at verse, verse 10 for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth 
and to him that knocketh it shall be opened look at verse 13 in verse 13 if he then being able know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him when you had salvation you asked when you had sanctification you asked and as you are going to have the infilling and baptism in the Holy Ghost, you ask three things. Number one, praying for the promise of the Spirit. Number two, perceiving the presence of the Spirit. Number three, possessing the power of the Spirit. Number one, praying for the promise of the Spirit. Look at 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Ask him for the promise of the spirit. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. James chapter 1 verse 6 in James chapter 1 verse 6 but let him ask in faith you're saved let him ask in faith you're sanctified let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed it tells us that we must ask in faith. Number two. Number two there, perceiving the presence of the Spirit. Now, you sent to someone and you said it shall come to you. And not only to visit, but to dwell, to abide, to stay. In the same habitation house where you are. When he comes, you will know. When he stays, you will know. If he's present there, you will know. You will not say, I asked him to come. I don't know whether he has come. You will know. I asked him to abide with me. And abide with me forever as Christ has promised if he is abiding there you will know you will perceive the presence of the Spirit Acts chapter 10 verse 33 immediately therefore I sent Cornelius talking to Peter I sent to thee and thou as well done that thou art come now therefore are we all present here before god to hear all things that are commanded thee of god that's the attitude of anyone who is going to receive the freshness of the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we're all here and we're present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. And then in verse 44, look at that. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them 
How many of them? All them. How many of us? Tonight. I said tonight. The Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. Now, how do we know? That is now present. How do we perceive that is now present? Look at verse 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, surprised, amazed. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues. Peter did not teach them how to speak in tongues. He didn't say, don't speak your Greek language. Repeat after me. And then faster and faster and faster. And then now you've got nothing like that. All these things that people, what would do we do that? And they give you the fake counterfeit. And you don't have the real comforter, the spirit of truth. It says, for they heard them speak of tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, verse 47, can any man forbid water that these shall not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we as well as we in the same manner that we received nobody teaching us how to speak in tongues now when we have salvation salvation comes of the joy of salvation and nobody tells us at the point of salvation you have confessed your sin, rejoice, 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 start laughing, start laughing. Then you have salvation. Uh -uh. Why are we deceiving the people? When the salvation really comes, it will come with joy. It will come with the peace of God. At sanctification, we don't tell anybody to conjure and think and imagine peace and calmness, the deep peace of God in their heart no when they have the sanctification that the peace of god will be there the same thing with the holy ghost we don't have to tell anybody don't talk english again don't talk uh, your biblio language your ethic or don't talk your you know potam language anymore uh, just uh, you know say whatever if a uh, bar comes to your mind bar time and all that comes to you. we don't we don't do that they said they received the holy ghost as well as we and I pray your experience will be genuine in Jesus name and look at um, Acts chapter 6 verse 5 Acts chapter 6 reading from verse 5 and the same pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. A man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and Stephen full of faith and power. That's the proof. He got it. You will get it. Stephen full of faith and power. Did great wonders and miracles among the people look at verse 10 in verse 10 and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which they speak look at number three there number three there possessing the power of the spirit the power of the spirit second timothy chapter one we're looking at verse six second timothy Chapter 1, verse 6, Therefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up 
the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. You know some people, since I started speaking in tongues and I received the Holy Ghost baptized, I'm surprised. I fear. I fear the future. I fear people. I fear men. Uh -uh. That's not the Holy Ghost. It says, Jesus said, the Holy Ghost is another comforter like him. And Jesus did not come into anybody's life and then make him afraid. No. When we have the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, and the comforter, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. For you, amen. Yes. Point number three now. Point number three, the plenitude of full baptism in the spirit. Three things. Number one, the comfort and the consolation by the spirit. Number two, the courage for conquering in the spirit. Number three, our completeness in Christ through the Spirit. Number one, comfort and consolation by the Spirit. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then at the church's rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord, not wanting to offend the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. In the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. The comfort of the Holy Ghost will come to your life. At home, in the office, anywhere you are, Nothing will jerk you or jolt you, frighten you, terrify you when the Holy Ghost takes residence inside us. His comfort will be there. His consolation will be there in your life fulfillment. I come to number two there. Number two, the courage for conquering in the spirit. We're looking at Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1. It says in Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 37. In verse 37, it tells us there, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I was waiting for a good amen there. We are more than conquerors. Anybody there? You're conquer. You conquer sin. You conquer sickness. You conquer demons. Any demon. Any demon. Wherever they are coming from. You conquer in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost man. Holy Ghost woman. As you are coming like this, they'll be clearing out of the way for you. You will conquer premature death. Amen. You will not die before your time. Amen. Older, 
older, older, and healthy. Now, there are two kinds of old people. Some people that are old and frail, old and sick, old and they have old age disease, and they are managing to live, and they are, it's like, why am I here? Is it not better to be up there than to be down there? And then I'm so weak, but then there's another kind of old people, old person, old and healthy, old and agile, old and standing, old and powerful. Now, let me tell you, I have a story to tell you. The power that conquers, that conquers disease, sickness, premature death in your life. I won't tell you the story if you don't shout, Amen! Last month, March, we were in uh, Yenegua, by Elta State, south, south, like you. There was one of my daughters there. Before I came there, she had cancer. The cancer affected her breast, her body, her legs became paralyzed, hands became withered, and the cancer continued to spread, and the eyes became blind. In the hospital, the good, effective, expert medical doctors confirmed and they said she had only one month to live. And then on Thursday, we started the Bayelsa Crusade. And she said, once I hear the voice, because she couldn't see anymore, carry me there. Once I hear the voice of my father, I will be well. You will be well. Let me tell my daughter now to speak to you directly. Daughter, talk to them. Thank you, Daddy, for giving me the opportunity to share my testimony. In short, I suffered a lot for two good years. I suffered. Everybody around, even my street, they thought nobody believed that I'll make it in life. At first, they said breast cancer, and the doctors gave me only one month of survival. If I didn't cut off the breast, but we prayed, and I believe God. Before you know, my two legs paralyzed. I couldn't walk. My hand paralyzed, with that. This my hand you are seeing now that I am moving. Paralyzed, everything about me collapsed. My whole system collapsed. I cannot eat, nothing I can do. It. If I lie down, I lie down 24 hours. Except if I want to go and win, they will carry me to go and win. Anything I'm doing, they carry me to base, my mom, my husband, everybody around me. Before I know, my two eyes got blind, totally blind. Went to the hospital. They said the eye I cannot see with it again. That the eyes are bad. But God kept me. For three months, more than three months, I could not eat. Even when the doctors fix drip, the vein, everything rejects, even the drip from my body. But God, this is my God that I'm serving, prove himself in the Bayasa State Global Crusade. The first day, the first, very first day, immediately our daddy in the Lord clung to the pulpit after introduction. I just see his foundation. 
from my true end because I raised my hand with my blindness. I'm not even seeing anything. I raised my two hands. I say, I told myself as we were going. I say, immediately I heard the sound of my father and the Lord. Everything about this, my body, God will do it for me. That was my belief with my husband. We held our hand, we prayed. Because even the doctors, they've given up. They say this for this case. Because even the leg, when they look at my age, they say it's osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis at my age? Everything collapsed about me. I cannot pull. Everything collapsed. But that first day of the crusade, immediately our daddy climbed the altar and said, In Jesus' name, that amen. I felt as if an electric shock from my hands down to my leg. And immediately, everything about me, even my nails, my nails that have dropped, everything came back alive. My eyes, I can see. Since then, I'm seeing up to date. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Oh God cannot do because God exists. Somebody praise the Lord! Your time. Your time. You will conquer from tonight. Every challenge of your life, you conquer in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three and final. Our completeness in Christ through the Spirit. My brother, I'm looking at you there. You are complete. Yeah. Yes, sister, daughter, you are complete from tonight. Yeah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10. It says in verse 10, and ye are complete. Yeah. And ye are complete anything missing your body god will supply and ye are complete your eyes and ye are complete your ears and ye are complete your backbone and ye are complete and all your bone structure and ye are complete your spiritual life and ye are complete job work profession, prosperity, and ye are complete. In your family, husband and wife, you are barren now, barrenness is gone. And ye are complete, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. I say amen for you. I shout amen for you. It's bowed and eyes closed. Christ wants to come into your life and make you complete. But you have to give him chance. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, me unto him, fellowship with him, and soap with him. It's knocking at the door of your heart right now. And if anyone, anyone, salvation is for everyone. Everyone here, everyone in every location, all over Nigeria, all over Africa, all over every continent, every country of the world. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, Christ is ready to come in now. It's about a nice close. You want to be complete in Christ so that everything in your life is supply. But it starts with forgiveness of your sin. It starts with salvation of your soul. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. A life of completeness is about to begin right now. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. To the left, to the right, to the center, to the front, to the back. Anyway, you are in any location over the radio, over the television, raise up that hand now. Amen. Now, if you are raising up your hand, please stand up. 
completeness has come god bless you god bless you thank you very much stand up right there you want christ to come christ to come he'll forgive you he will cleanse you he will start a, a life of fullness and completeness he will start it in your life right now wherever you are you say i'm not you know i'm not happy the way i am i'm not complete i'm not full there is an emptiness there's a vacuum inside me and i want that life of completeness to start right now where are you raise up that hand and stand up i'm praying with you right now hand over your life unto the lord jesus christ and say lord jesus i give myself to you come in come in come in and dwell with me he will i'm praying for you now father in the mighty name of jesus I pray for every brother, every sister, everyone standing now. I pray forgiveness will come to them. I pray freedom will come to them. And I pray all the power of sin in their lives, blot them out in Jesus' name. Let the life of fullness and completeness touch in their lives right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will give you the slip to feel. When we finish that, then total, complete, full, completeness will come to every life. This is the last night. You've been doing well all these nights. And you'll be staying, stay tonight. You'll carry your miracle back home. We will be committed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Towards the end of the chapter, we see that uh, the, new, the rebuilt world of Jerusalem was dedicated. And uh, many, many of the priests and believers were called to, to dedicate, to worship the Lord. And they sang praises, and they sang as one man. My brethren, let us pray that in all our locations, we take praise and worship to be very serious, praising the Lord for what he has done for us. The people, uh, the, the priests and the devices, they don't say they recognize that it was the Lord who had them to rebuild the, 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 the Jerusalem. Let us pray, brethren, that in all our locations, we will take worship and praises very seriously so that the, the power of the Lord will come upon us. Open your mouth and pray. Praise and worship. This is what the, this is what the Levites did. This is what the Levites did. This is what the priests did. They praised the Lord. In short, it was a procession. Let us pray that we all will get involved in praising the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we thank you. We bless you because you have called us in to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We're asking, oh Lord, that every heart will be sanctified, every lip will be dedicated to worship you as the, as the priest of old. Oh Lord, in every location, we are asking that we will use all our hearts to express our gratitude unto you. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Uh, before we wrap up, we are going to just sing this song, my brethren. Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in Are you in that number? Are you in that number? And so, Father, we thank you because you have enabled us to see the, the names and the list of all the priests and believers. Lord God, you have reserved this list for, for us so that we can also take after them. We're asking, oh Lord, that every member of the church worldwide, deeper life, 
We pray, oh Lord, help us to, to be men and women dedicated to worship you day after day until we see you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. to be members of the kingdom, help mm -hmm. us to be so committed and faithful. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to continue praying from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13. We can see in Nehemiah 13 from verse 7. It says, And I came to Jerusalem and understood the evil that Elisheb did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me sore. Therefore, I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. I commanded that they cleanse the chamber and brought again the vessels out of, out of God with the meat offering and frankincense. Let us pray that, that God will make us to be sensitive to sin. You know, just as to, um, Nehemiah observed the evil, he grieved him in his spirit. He grieved his spirit. Let us pray that any sin that we have become so comfortable harboring, that we have disregarded God, any sin that is around us, surrounding us, whether we, even if we are not the ones sinning, but we have become so comfortable allowing sin to be in our premises, allowing sin to be in, to be part of our daily life. Let us pray that God will give us that spirit of Nehemiah, that we will become grieved, that God will give us, God will prick our heart that will be sensitive to sin and that we will do whatever it takes to cast them out of our environment in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that God will greet us of every forms of evil, every forms of ungodliness in our homes, in our church, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, in the house of the Lord, in our homes, Father Lord, we are praying and asking, oh God, that you give us the spirit, oh God, to not tolerate sin. You give us the spirit, oh God, to rid ourselves off of sin in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it's something that we are seeing and we are not seeing anything, and we are kind of so comfortable seeing it, Father Lord, we are praying and asking, oh God, that you help us, oh God, to be able to get rid of it and get rid of it out of our sight in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. We also see here in this chapter that um Nehemiah saw things that were just not right. You know, the Sabbath day was supposed to be only, you know, people observing, observing God. It was a day of rest. People were buying and selling. And he just saw that he needed to make a drastic change. Let us know that whatever leadership position we are currently anchoring or we find ourselves anchoring or, or, or in, in the future, let us know that anything that we see in the house of the Lord, anything that we see amongst us that is just not right, that we know that this thing could destroy the plan and purpose of God for our lives. Let us know that God will give us the bold and the courage to set things right in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Every form of sin, every form of things that we are aboring, things that we know can destroy the work of the Lord, things that we know can destroy the church of God. Father, we are going to ask you, Lord God, and give us the boldness and the courage, just like the prayer that I had, to set things straight in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lastly, we can also see that in this chapter, Nehemiah, even with everything that he was doing, everything that he was correcting, he was still constantly asking God. He was still saying, God, remember me. Have mercy upon me. For someone that was so bold and courageous, for someone that was so willing to change things, he was not just saying, he was not just doing it on his own. Because at any point, somebody could have stood up and said, who do you think you are, Nehemiah? How come you just come here and change everything the way we, we've been living? Why are you here changing everything? But Nehemiah kept calling upon the Lord. That's what God will give us grace and God will give us mercy. That as we continue to 
should set things right in our churches, set things right in our home, the things that were out of order that we are trying to put in place, that God will have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Whether it's, you find yourself in a family that is not godly, you're trying to set things right there to make your family godly, or is it a church that you have seen things that are just not right, you're trying to set things right there that God, that God, that we know that people, people, <laughs> people, Huh? We know that the devil will never want to allow it. Mm -hmm. We know that the devil will want to rise against us. But let us pray that God will have mercy upon us and that God will give us the grace, that his grace will be sufficient enough for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us. You remember us, oh God, as we continue to try to do whatever we can to make our lives right with you, to make our church a standard that 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 that, 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 that you that you will love. Father Lord, we pray that you give us that grace, oh God, to continue to do the things, to continue to do your will in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue in our prayer session and we are considering Esther chapter one. Um, let's sing this song together. My life shall be a testimony. 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 My life shall be a testimony, testimony to the glory of the Lord. My life shall be a testimony, testimony, testimony. My life shall be a testimony, testimony to the glory of the Lord. Our lives will be testimonies in Jesus' name. As we consider the book of Esther in this uh, short time we have, we see here that this is the continuation of the previous chapter we read, the book of Nehemiah. We see that the children of the children of Israel, we, we, are, we are looking at um, three characters here. We see Esther, we see Ahasuerus, we see Vashti. Three people that is going to make that their decision will change their lives forever. The decision of Vashti 